Hey guys, we're Evan and Caitlin, and today we're going to be upgrading our X-Carve. We added a T-Track clamping system, which is awesome because it allows us to set up jigs more easily, and, and we can clamp smaller objects with less stock because it clamps from the sides, not from the top. And thanks to Chromebook for sponsoring this video. <laughs> so there are three things we had to keep in mind when choosing where to put our T-Tracks. One is we didn't want to hit any of the threaded inserts that are embedded in the wasteboard. Two, we had to have room for the feet of the clamp to actually be able to be inserted into the T-Tracks. And three, we had to make sure we had enough clearance for the clamps to not hit the rails. We're visual planners, so we downloaded a photo of the X-Carve on the Chromebook to sketch ideas over. What's gonna be so, the most optimal placement? So instead of having T-Track everywhere, we can reduce the amount of T-Track, reduce the amount of clamps by only clamping in this direction and in this direction. T-Track running here and here, and then yeah. this is a movable L. Yeah, and that will hold one corner and then this will hold the two other faces. There you go. <laughs> Looks really this comfortable. Is, this is how I do things normally. So this is the final layout of the T-Trap. It hits all of the points that we mentioned earlier. We have enough space here to insert the feet. We're gonna cut it a little bit short here so we have place for the feet. We are away from the brass inserts. We have room for the feet and we have room for the clamps. All right, so the foot is about 0.8 inches. So let's maybe give ourselves 0.9 would be fine. So we're gonna start right here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this. Keep this going right here. You're sharpening faster than I can pass. Wee! And this part right here, we're gonna leave empty for the foot to go in. Measurements, measurements. Does whatever measurements do. We measured our T-tracks and wasteboard to program the cuts. We'll link to our files below, which include everything if you want to do this for your CNC or use it for reference. Are we ready to make? The cuts? The cuts? <laughs> I'm ready to make the file. Ready to make the file! Mm. File the lasers! <laughs> file, file the lasers! Now that I have my measurements, I'll just go ahead and put in 28.75. Done. Mm. So best practice is before you run anything, make sure that your gantry is square. And for this, we want to be extra sure. Okay. We even? Go the same. Yeah. Stop. So we're going to do an air run to make sure that this will be cutting where we want it to cut before we actually cut into the wasteboard. It's looking straight now. Yeah, it looks straight. Yeah, like just crowd the line on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, measure the material, confirm home position, raise the bit, spindle is on. Noticing that there is a strange sound coming from this uh, first Y motor. It was struggling to move and things were getting a little bit off. So I went ahead and stopped it and then I noticed that the cable became unplugged. I fixed it, everything looks good. Now we're gonna recenter it and run it again. One thing you may have noticed is that we added this extra wood here because since we were cutting so close to the edge, the dust collection shoe was overhanging and it wasn't getting full suction. So we added this and it worked really, really good. But for now, come on over and I'll, let's do a test fit on uh, how well these fit in here. Okay. Ready? Nope. Ready? Nope. Okay, yes. Oh. No, I can't see it. Yeah, what? No, no. Yeah, nope. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet! So even with our little, uh... Whoopsie. Even with our little whoopsie, still fits well. Alright. You ready? Recording. That was so satisfying to watch. Very nice. 
other piece. We need to make our other piece. <laughs> Next, we're going to make the other part of this project, which is the L that our clamps can push against to keep that right angle secure. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Evan's measuring what size we need that L to be. Good to go. I think that L is too small. Well, we can use the L to make a bigger L. I told Evan I didn't want to use these clamps yet because this isn't the final. How are we supposed to have a final reveal if we're using the mid project? We're using the clamps to make the clamps. That will be the clamp that we use. <laughs> well, they work well. We can make a single one and then we can make a double one from the same stock. While the X-Carve works, let's talk about how we like to use the Chromebook. It's like a cross between a laptop and a tablet, and our favorite part is how we can use it to sketch ideas and take notes. We have a tendency to lose notebooks and paper scraps in the shop, and I guess we could probably manage to lose the Chromebook here too, but it'd be a lot harder. Plus, Evan feels cool using a device with a flip screen, and I feel cool because I can draw straighter lines with a stylus My than him. So much straighter than yours. <laughs> for making the bigger corner bracket is because we wanted something beefier but also we decided to make it with plywood so it would be harder to break I feel like this guy you could just <laughs> <laughs> so if you notice the one that broke it broke in the direction of the grain yeah but since this has no grain it is strong in all directions so I would try it but just in case <laughs> While we cut out this big support, we also wanted to give a shout out to our Patreons for all of their big support. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. You, you wanna scooch it? Scooch it. Cool. Looks perfect. <laughs> Looks good. You wanna hold it up to me? So I can get a... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hug. The spooning. If we need to, we can always make a big one. Like a big, big. Like a four or like a seven or 12. The possibilities are literally endless. Well, not literally. There's only so many uh, threaded holes across here. But almost literally endless. And we can add more clamps too if we want. We can add like five, six clamps on each side if we were cutting something really big. Should we cut some side. things? Let's cut some things. Maybe some of those hex ring dish holder things? Yes, so we can sell them and make millions. Or tens. Let's make tens dollars. of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> This process of setting the home you see us doing before each cut, now that we can easily set up jigs, we don't have to home it each time if we're doing multiples of the same piece, which is cool. Okay. Dust. Dust. Spindle. Spindle. You ready? Red. So we were going to cut three of these with the same jig, but this clamp was positioned a little bit too close to the workpiece and we were worried that this was gonna hit it. So we went ahead and removed it, but this still held it really good, which is really impressive and makes us feel good about our setup. But what we'd recommend doing is spacing your work a little bit farther away. And if you need to, you can put another spacer board like these to help you space it. If the bit hits anything, it'll hit the sacrificial piece of wood instead. So we're gonna reposition this guy so that we don't risk hitting the clamp anymore. I think it'll be just wide enough. That's good. It's time. 
Now that this jig is set up, we can pop in a new piece of stock without having to home the machine. Oh, perfect again. As it should be. Because it's a nice jig. Woo, clamping jig success. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Oh yeah. Hope you like this video and let us know in the comments if you have any suggestions on how we could take this clamping system even further. And we read all the comments and reply to, we really try to reply to every single one. So hope to see you down there. <laughs> and if you want to see more about this and get some behind the scenes, we're going to be talking about that soon in our after show, which we publish on patreon.com slash Evan and Caitlin. Hope to see you there. Bye. Bye. That's pretty good. I love this angle. <laughs> it's the most flattering angle. Is that comfortable? It's so comfortable. <laughs> Time to program! Time to program! <laughs>